The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. This summer, embark on a transformative journey with the Believer's Walk of Faith as we dive into the foundational teachings of faith. Join Dr. Bill Winston in our powerful summer series, Back to the Basics, where we'll unlock the timeless wisdom and revelation for walking by faith from his extensive library. We're going back to old school. Yes, Say amen. amen. We're going back to the oldies but goodies. These are things that'll work for you. I don't care what season you're in. I don't care whether you got a PhD or no D. I don't care whether you're in Africa or in Asia. This will work for you anytime, any place. Get ready for the basic fundamentals for every believer to live a victorious life as a kingdom citizen. Don't miss out. Tune in every week to gain understanding, revelation, and reignite your commitment of faith. Watch every week on Believer's Walk of Faith and spread the word. Hello, this is Bill Winson and welcome to another program. The program that you're watching is called The Believer's Walk of Faith, where we walk by faith and not by sight. We have a delightful program for you today. We're teaching on commanding the blessing. Now, this blessing is a very powerful thing that God has placed on humanity. Really, it's a kind of thing that you can go into a neighborhood that's all torn up and that blessing can fix it up. I mean, make it like the Garden of Eden. Now, I know you wonder how you're going to do this. Well, that's why you tuned in. Praise God. Now, let me give you a couple of things that we're going to talk about during this teaching today. God will provide proficiency for you to do anything. Anything that He called you to, He'll prepare you for. In other words, He'll give you enough proficiency or skill to be able to do that. And again, I mentioned David as he's coming to the front line. He's just a shepherd boy, 17 years old. But he comes up there and he offers to fight Goliath. And Saul says something to him. He said, you can't beat this guy. He's the biggest guy on earth. And he had been trained in war from his youth. Well, God said through David, he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. What is that table? That table of proficiency, that table of knowledge, of wisdom, of skill, things you need to have. God will prepare. When he calls you to something, he provides for you for that something. Praise God. The second thing, we're in Christ. He's the head and we're the body. Now this blessing flows from the head and it flows down to the body. I want to read you a scripture. This is found in Psalm 133 verses 1 through 3. Here's what he says. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descendeth upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Now, what are we saying? We're saying that God is commanding the blessing on places that have been unified and that are anointed, meaning that you and I, um, in this particular case in the book, Aaron was anointed by Moses and that anointing oil went down his beard and down on his garment. Well, that's in the New Testament is Christ, who is our high priest. And he's anointed by the Father. And that anointing went from the head down to the body. Well, who's the body of Christ? It's us, you and me. We call, we'll call Christians. So little Christ are anointed. Now there the Lord commanded the blessing. Glory to God. And you know, when God commands things, they move. He commanded some birds, they fed the prophet. <laughs> he commanded a widow woman to take care of him. She had one meal left, but she took care of him. I'm saying you're in for a good time with the blessing when that blessing gets to be commanded on you. So God is commanding the blessing in these last days. Some needs of yours are going to be met supernaturally and you just watch, you'll be able to give God all the praise for it. Let's go into it. Get your Bibles and pencils and papers ready. It's called Commanding the Blessing. The blessing comes on your life when you get born again. But the blessing that comes on your life when you get born again cannot be 
turned back. It cannot be rescinded. It cannot be taken back. Now, all that we saw when we looked over here in Genesis and Genesis, glory to God, and Genesis chapter 25 and verse 5, we saw Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. That means he passed on the blessing. But now Isaac now has got to pass it on to Jacob. And it says in verse 29, and Jacob sought pottage uh, and Esau came from the field and was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name, uh, uh, pardon me, for his name called Edom. And Jacob said, sell me this day the, thy birthright. So you're the firstborn, Esau, sell me your birthright, that, that, that blessing. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point of death. Uh, to, about to die. And what profit shall this birthright be to me? And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore to him and he sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau uh, uh, bread and pottage and lentils. And he did set and drink and rose up and went his way. And Esau did what? He despised the blessing. In other words, he didn't value it. Well, God bless you, brother. Hey, praise God. God bless you. Hey. Okay. But do you value the blessing? Because if you don't value the blessing there, you won't value it on you. And so what happened now is, of course, his mother said, wait a minute, I heard that, you know, that, that your father's about to bless the firstborn, so why don't you sneak in there and do this? So that is exactly what he did. And look what he did in Genesis chapter 27, now and verse, uh, come on down and verse 27. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him. And said, see, the smell of my son is the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Verse 28, therefore God give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine and let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord of thy brethren and let thy mother's uh, sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curse you and blessed be everyone that bless you. He goes out. Once he blesses him, notice he didn't have a lawyer there. Notice he didn't have any kind of scribe there or secretary a court reporter. Notice he didn't have any kind of witnesses there. The only thing he had there was him and Jacob. And notice what he did. He passed it on to him. Now, how did he pass it on to him? By what? By faith. Say faith. faith. Say faith. Now, faith, faith is a substance of things what? Hope for the evidence of things what? Not seen. Now, what am I saying to you? I'm saying that this book says that Christ has redeemed you from the curse, being made a curse for you, for curses everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham shall come on the Gentile through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. How? Through faith. So how are you going to have to receive it? Through faith. And look at verse 29 in that same chapter. And if you belong to Christ, then are you whose seed? Abraham's seed and what? Heirs according to the promise. So what God promised Abraham, he is also promising you. Say amen to that. Now, so if that be me and I got the blessing on my life, why don't I start acting like it? Why isn't the blessing kicking in? Why isn't the blessing manifesting in my life? Well, that's why you got to go back to a man named uh, Joseph. Now, before I get there, let's go to it. Praise God. But let's go to Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1, just before we go to Joseph. Look at God speaking now to Abraham. Now, the Lord had said to Abraham, get thee out of thy country, come on, from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I'm going to show you. Let me put it in my own word. Get out from around home girl and homeboy and stop borrowing money from your mama and stop, come on, come on, I'm going to help you now, I'm going to help you. See, he is saying, he is saying, wait a minute, you've got to, if you want this blessing to kick in, you've got to see God as your only source. You, you've got to stop looking to people for a handout and begging somebody to do something for you. Say amen. And notice what God 
said next in verse 2? He said, and I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless you, and I'll make your name what? Great. And thou shalt be a what? Blessing. Stop right there. I will bless you. Now, if he's saying it to Abraham, he's saying it to you. You don't need any court reporter. You don't need any, any scribe, no lawyer. The only, you don't need Bill Winston. All you need to do is, is this in the Word of God? Is this in the Word of God? Because if it's in the Word of God, everything in my life from this day should shift. Everything that I'm struggling with, my struggle should be over. Say amen to this. Now, he said in verse 3, he said, I will bless them that bless you. I'm going to curse them that curse you. And in thee, all families of the earth shall be what? Blessed. So I'm not done just being blessed. I'm not done till I become a blessing to other people. Say amen to that. All right. So if I go back now and go all the way down to Genesis chapter 31, now this is when Jacob's got the blessing on him. Now notice what he's got. He's working for Laban but Laban is swindling him, cheating him out of everything he's got. Now, that's not supposed to happen to a blessed person. But in what's happening is Jacob is not putting any pressure on the blessing. He is not walking according to the blessing. He's still trying to bank on the system, trying to take care of him. But pretty soon he came to Laban. Laban said, now, wait a minute. I know we've had some problems. Matter of fact, I have cheated you out of your wages 10 times. But I'm going to do you a favor. What do you want? What do you want me to pay you? Here's what he told him. Don't pay me a thing. He said, what does, does the cattle and livestock that'll produce potted speckle and stripe, that'll be mine. Everything else will be yours. Here's what Laban said. I got this fool now. And what happened? He didn't know the blessing was about to kick in. So I'm saying... In your life, it looks like you are disadvantaged, but ain't no such thing as disadvantage with the people of the blessing. There is no disadvantage. Stop looking at your color. Stop looking at your background. Stop looking at the school you didn't go to. Stop looking at what people are recommending about you. Your recommendation comes from God. It's in this paper right here. If he recommends you for a job, you don't need to know nobody at City Hall. So what am I saying? Next thing you know, here he was and he took everything. Look what he says in Genesis in chapter 31. It says in verse 1, and he heard the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's and was of our father's has he gotten all this glory, all this wealth, one of the translations say. So I'm telling you right now that the wealth came with because of this, 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 this blessing that was on his life. So look what it says. I'm not going to read those others. Let's go all the way, fast forward, all the way over to Genesis chapter 37. Because now we got the blessing, and this blessing is about to kick in again. But it's about to kick in on a man's life named Joseph. Say Joseph. Joseph. Now, Joseph is kind of a type of Jesus, if you will. So notice what happened. First, Joseph had some dreams. It says here in verse 5, and Joseph dreamed a dream. Look at verse 9. And Joseph bring yet another dream. Now, this is the blessing working in his life. Now, he told it to his brethren. And when he told the dream to his brethren, his brethren got envious. So envious, they decided they're going to kill him. But they couldn't kill him because you can't kill a man who's walking in the blessing. Now, y'all got, do you believe your preacher? You, you, and so what happened is now, uh, this, uh, they threw him in a pit. Now, along come some Ishmaelites. Look what it says in Genesis 37 and verse 28. And there passed by Midianite merchantmen. And they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ish uh, Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph to Egypt. Now, notice what happened. They Merchantmen came. They drew him up out of the pit. Now, I understand they threw him in this pit and it was hot as blazes out there in that desert. And the fact of the thing is, watch this, there was no water. Now, your body can go for 40 days without food. 
but try to make it go three days, four days, five days, six days without water. Say amen to this. And, and I'm just saying here was Joseph in a pit. They were going to leave him there. But here comes a caravan showing up. Watch this. Right at the right time. Now I'm here to tell you that this blessing is working on Joseph and it's working 24 seven. So this blessing knew that they were going to throw him in a pit. So it started the caravan a month ago that happened to pass by that way at that time. I'm saying God knows everything the devil's about to do to you. And he started things working long before you got in trouble. But it looks like things are bad for you. But if you just hold on and don't get mad, don't get angry, don't get bitter, stop talking negative, watch the curse turn to the blessing. I'm saying it'll happen to you every time. So now this group is under God's direction and God is coordinating this caravan travel and they coordinated them down and now they lifted Joseph out, paid some money for him and now they took him all the way down to Egypt. Now they took him down there and sold him to a wealthy, influential man who was an Egyptian in the, and a captain in Pharaoh's army. So they sold him to him. So here is Joseph working for a man named Potiphar. And look what it says in verse 1. In Genesis chapter 39 in verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with who? Joseph. And he was who? A prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. So what this tells you is prosperity that God has planned for you had nothing to do with your salary. And I'm here to tell you right now, God will prosper you if they ain't paying you a dime because that's the power of the blessing. Say amen to that. And it says, verse 3, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight and served him. And he made him overseer over his house and over all that he had, he put under Joseph's hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer over his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. Now, what am I telling you now? I'm saying wherever you work, they're going to be blessed. And in this time, they understood the blessing and those Egyptians knew what that blessing looked like. So during Joseph's generation, this Egyptian say, that blessing is on this man right here. Now I'm going to put everything I have into his hand. Now the revelation of that is the fact that notice when he put everything under Joseph's hand, he didn't know what was coming in, what was going out. He just trusted Joseph with it and Joseph took care of all of the things that needed to be taken care of in terms of provision. Notice the only thing Potiphar was concerned about is the plate that was on his table. When is my breakfast, my dinner going to be here? My point to you is God never intended for you to get all caught up in provision and what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, what I'm going to wear, how I'm going to pay these bills. He wants Jesus to take care of that. And you take care of your assignment, the assignment and the thing that God has called you to do. Say amen to that. So now what has happened is now jo Joseph is endued with this power for success. And notice here come Mrs. Potiphar. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Mrs. Potiphar coming. Well, what will sin do? Sin will dial down the blessing. Sin will dial down the blessing. Sin will make it so even though the blessing is on you, it won't function like it should. The Bible says if you do sin, you have an attitude with the father. You can confess your sin. God is faithful and just to what? Forgive you your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness and you can rise up again. So notice
Notice, they threw Joseph in jail. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 39 and verse 21 and 22, and Joseph now has got favor in jail. And Joseph took over the prison that the jailer made Joseph the warden of the jail. And notice now he's down there for life, that there was no hope in getting back because you just done offended a sister Potiphar. She didn't told a lie on you. And now you're in jail. But the blessing is working because Joseph is not down there talking about that Potiphar, that heifer, she got me down here in jail. Now, I'm, listen, you don't need to call no names. All you need to do is call his name, the name of Jesus. It's above every name. Well, you see what this is like. This is like a type of Christ that he paid your sins in mind, that he was didn't sin not once, but he took your sin. He was falsely accused. He was buried and lived in that tomb and down in that grave. And when he was down in there, he had to suffer for your price and my price. But I'm telling you, on the third day, God saw that the sin and penalty for sin have been paid and he said get him up praise God so I'm here to tell you right now that here is Joseph and notice what happened that Joseph uh, was called to Potiphar why a, a Pharaoh why was he called a Pharaoh because Joseph a Pharaoh had a dream Pharaoh had a dream now who do you think gave him the dream God. The Bible says God is head over the heathen. That means he can command people to bring money to your house. That means, come on, you got to go with me now. He can command people to give you stuff. He can command somebody to come to work for you who never intended to work for you on your staff. He can open up doors for you. He can cause increase to come to you. I'm talking about heathen will give you stuff and they can't stand you and don't like your praise. But I'm here to tell you, just lift up the blessing and the blessing will lift you up. Notice what happened. No matter what environment you went to, he went to Potiphar, he became the head. Come on. He went to jail, he became the head. Come on. Now he's talking about going up to Pharaoh. And because he told Pharaoh what the dream was, then Pharaoh put him in office in the government and Joseph became the head over everybody that was down there. Say amen to that. So I'm just saying to you right now that God has a big plan for your life. And here's what it says in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 31. He said this, and this is a type of Christ, and this is a type of your life. Another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed when a man took it and sowed in his field. Watch this. And indeed it was the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herb and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge under the branches thereof. What am I talking about? Notice, Joseph was taken down there in obscurity. In other words, nobody knew him and nobody cared. He was the least among everything that was down in Egypt. But notice, when the blessing is on his life, God began to give supernatural increase. I said increase in wisdom. He had never meant to, went to match ranch management school, yet he knew how to handle cattle and sell and buy sheep. Come on now. He had never expelled talk about some things you don't even have proficiency for that the blessing gonna step in and give you the proficiency that you need. And notice he said what he did is planting him in Egypt. Why? What does this scripture say here? It says that God deliberately plants the righteous among the wicked. Glory to God. It's not only that you're going to let your light so shine in the midst of them, but you're about to transfer whatever is in there that belongs to the kingdom of God. Say amen to that. So I'm saying to you right now that it may look like you're going through something, but now that you got the knowledge of the blessing and you just give God praise for the blessing that is on your life, whatever you're doing, and it's causing now look like you're at a disadvantage, just hold on to the blessing because right now as I speak, it is starting to change. I said it's going to change to your favor. Come on, it may look like you broke light right now, but start giving praise to God because now the blessing is about to kick in. Come on, it might look like your marriage is in trouble right now, but start 
giving God the praise because whatever's missing, the blessing is going to supply. I'm saying this is your season, this is your year, and resurrection is coming to your life. Increase your confidence in the blessing to manifest all the promises of God for your life in Pastor Winston's dynamic teaching, Commanding the Blessing. To order your copy of this life-changing message on CD or MP3 on DVD or MP4, contact us online at BillWinston.org. You can also call us at 1-800-711-9327. This is Bill Winston. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Now, somebody say, well, I don't know about that. Let me tell you, when I was a kid, I went to church with mom and dad, but I found out when I got older, I really didn't know him. And what happened, one lady came and took me to a meeting. I confessed Jesus as Lord of my life and a miracle took place. Everything changed. I'm just saying in your life, if you're ready for a change, it's time to confess him. You ask Jesus to come into your heart and watch the miracle take place. If you've confessed that, I want to give you my book. It's called Born Again and Spirit Phil. I want to be the first to say, welcome to the family of Almighty God. God bless you. Revival is here. Join us for the 2024 International Faith Conference hosted by Dr. Bill Winston, Sunday, September 8th through Friday, September 13th, 2024. Inspired by Isaiah 61.4 NLT. This year's theme is Faith for Revival. Six generals of faith will release electrifying messages to supercharge your faith and transform your life. Each night, a sensational musical artist will lead us in worship, lifting our spirits as we press in into a deeper connection with God. An unforgettable experience that you don't want to miss. Register now at ifc.billwinston.org to join us in person at Living Word Christian Center in Forest Park, Illinois, or online. A week of miracles, breakthroughs, and a revival like never before awaits you. We can't wait to see you there. Sometimes, as we grow in our Christian walk, we forget about the basics that got us there. Yet, the basics of our faith are the very foundation we need to be successful in our relationship with the Lord and with others, and to fulfill God's plan and purpose for our kingdom destiny. In this Back to the Basics series, a powerful compilation of 16 series of dynamic teachings by Dr. Bill Winston, you will learn how to renew and re-energize your Christian walk. Get your copy of this must-have series on USB. To order, go online at billwinston.org or call us at 1-800-711-9327. The mission of Bill Winston Ministries is to preach the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. We invite you to become a partner and join Dr. Bill Winston as he trains believers how to live independent of this world system and have dominion over it. Thank you, Bill Winston Ministry partners and viewers for your continuous support of the Believer's Walk of Faith broadcast. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love you and keep walking by faith.